violin case looks pretty old. But that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. Excuse me, sir. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen. Really? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah, well... Why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought... Uh, because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Then, and also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. Have a good trip. Thank you. Matt says the violinist put something in his violin case on the platform. Seems suspicious somehow. The question is, how credible is a statement from an imaginative boy? The kid's not on the warpath anymore. I don't think he'll be causing any more trouble. For the next half hour, anyway. All right, Matt. Tell me now. The violinist won't let me check his violin case. Of course he won't. He's hiding something. Should I distract him? Then you can have a look in his case. Hmm. What do you suggest? I... I could tell him there's a suitcase full of money in the next carriage. If he's a thief, he'll definitely want to take a look at it. I don't think he'll fall for that. Or I can insult him and then run away. He'll try to catch me and you'll have a chance to look in that violin case. Now that I think about it, this is something I have to attend to on my own. It would be expecting a bit much from a little boy. Little boy? You must be kidding. Uh, sorry, uh, Sheriff, but your idea about distracting him is good all the same. So long. So longer. is uncooperative. I'm not authorized to search his belongings against his will and without a good reason. And he knows it. I have to come up with something. Professor Lucien? Yes? Do you have the key? Actually, I want it. Please. I have to go back to my compartment. Constable Anton Jakob Zeller, whose time shall surely come. Clarissa Westmacott, DBE. First, I'd better see about getting the door open, and then have another talk with the professor. It doesn't seem like I'll get anything out of him as long as the door is still locked. I need the right key or a proper tool to get the door open. The 
Baroness seems to have a, a special personality. I better not bother her until I find her purse. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? Of course not, madam. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. And suddenly... It's me who's the thief on the train. Oops, that was easier than expected. Hmm, batteries, a toothbrush, shaving brush, but not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm, too small for the door, but it might still be useful. Dr. Gebhardt. Ah, Mr. Zellner. I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The queen of crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady Westmacott? You were talking to her? Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. Everything I need. I could really get a grip on the boat with these. Well, come on then, hurry up! Hello? I barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. 
Fine. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Uh, maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Well, certainly not. <laughs> not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? What's this? What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe, or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. Very nice fountain pen. Pricey. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. Hmm. No, nothing interesting. The Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick, and gin, whiskey, and rum. All classics. Professor Lucien? Yes? Oh, nothing. Well, uh, good. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. seems to have a, a special personality. I better not bother her until I find her purse. Matt says the violinist put something in his violin case on the platform. Seems suspicious somehow. The question is, how credible is a statement from an imaginative boy? Matt says the violinist put something in the qu- The viol- What are you doing? Didn't I make myself clear? The window stays closed. You're not alone on this train. I want the window open. Swiss politeness doesn't seem to be what it used to be. I'm not going to catch a cold because of you. Go somewhere else if you don't like it. I have no idea what I'd say to Matt.
pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. An extraordinary woman, yet there are but... I'd better let him read his newspaper if I don't have any pressing questions. I made the acquaintance of Dr. Gebhardt on the platform in Zurich. Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right. We should... What? The light's gone out! Flashlights! Ah! Get off me! There, sir! An envelope! My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's, it's a... Away with it! Take cover! Is everyone all right? Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Zellner. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Hurry, block the exit. But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde! Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? You have to uncouple the freight car, you understand? <coughs> I understand. I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it. Inspector's trap failed. The thief must have got wind of it. Mm, worse than that, he turned the tables. To win a game of cat and mouse, you have to know who is the cat and who is the mouse. The wheels came off the track during the explosion. Even if it were possible to pull the car out of the rubble, you wouldn't get far with it.
The coupling mechanism is down there, but I can hardly see a thing. I need some light. A lot was damaged by the sudden stop, but the bowl was thick enough to survive the fall. The last of the candy has vanished. Measured against the exploding freight car, I think the railway will overlook the loss. My God, what a fire. I hope Constable Oliver can at least reach the engine. Carling Black Label, a British beer. No good. Insufficient alcohol content. For practical purposes, I mean, not for drinking. Champagne, the finest. Maybe we'll open a bottle if we get out of the tunnel alive. Until then, though, it's no use to me. Whiskey, scotch, rum, liqueurs. Enough to entertain everyone on the train all the way from Paris to Istanbul. Hmm, high-proof rum. Could be useful. Rum from Austria. Believe it or not, it's 80% alcohol by volume. There's no way anyone would drink it straight. The last of the candy has vanished. Pills for my heart. I'm supposed to take one if I have pain. I haven't needed them yet. Pardon me, I did not mean to scare you. What are you doing here, Doctor? Legrand asked me to check whether there are any passengers left on the train. Really? No one is here, except for me and you. Excellent. Then I will continue searching at the front. Did anyone act suspiciously before the explosion? Did anyone leave the seat, for example? I was the only one on the train who wasn't seated when the freight car exploded. Thank God. Otherwise, I would have been caught by the blast as well. You certainly were lucky. Perhaps I was. What happened over there? The inspector said something about gas canisters that exploded. If Inspector Legrand says so, it must be so, right? I have been to war. And this was no minor explosion. I rather doubt that the freight car was packed to the roof with gas canisters. The investigations are ongoing, but first we have to get the burning train out of the tunnel. Of course. How are the passengers? They are in a state of shock, of course. The blackout and the sudden stop were frightening enough, but then the explosion, the dust, everyone rushed for the exits. I was helping the American woman bring Lady Westmacott to safety. They are waiting outside in the tunnel. One entrance is blocked by a fire, and the other one seems to have collapsed. Continue to search the train. I'll decouple the buried freight car. All right. Doctor? Can you give me a few matches? Oh, certainly. Thanks. I'll meet you outside. Do hurry.
I don't see Legrand or the constable, but I can make out the silhouettes of some of the passengers. They seem to be unscathed. All the same, the fire is getting bigger, and I don't have much time. I noticed the extinguisher earlier doesn't match the decor. I suppose that the railway company had to comply with safety regulations at the cost of aesthetics. It'd be useless against the fire out there and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here. Let's go. That should do it. The alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. A fine, but rather heavy curtain. The surface shimmers and feels smooth. Probably doesn't burn easily, like the tablecloths. Safety regulations require it, which, given the present situation, is actually a good thing. I should concentrate on uncoupling the freight car. I'm positive that Legrand has everything else under control. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. I'm sure I could uncouple the car if I only had enough light to see what I'm doing. pills for my heart. I'm supposed I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. Phew, strong stuff. That should do it.
can't really say the fabric was eager to soak up the rum. I, on the other hand, soaked up enough in my fingers to smell like a drunk. That'll get me something like a Molotov cocktail. I want light, but I don't want it to come from a wall of flames. The curtain is wrapped around the wood and doused in alcohol. I should be able to light the torch whenever I want. The curtain is wrapped around the wood and... Alcohol burns with a dim blue f Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. I filled the bowl about a th I bought it last week, second-hand. I liked it because it seems to tell a story. It was set aside for a newer model, even though it's still quite okay. I should concentrate on uncoupling the freight car. <sighs> the fire is sucking. Here in the Alps, there have been dozens of catastrophes in tunnels that ended with death by asphyxiation, but not on my watch. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. I'm sure I could uncouple the car if I only had enough light to see what I'm doing. There's a noticeable draft here. Maybe it's because of the fire, or perhaps there's still a hole through which the air is coming. The latter will be quite welcome. It will buy us some more time.
I'll never set fire to the chair like using matches. I need a better plan. I broke the leg off a beautiful chair, and knowing the Swiss Federal Railways, they'll bill me for it. I shouldn't be wasteful. One burning match should be enough. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire. 